and on your trolley in a methodical order. So the first thing you're going to do is remove the eye makeup. The second thing, cleanse. You've got your toner, your exfoliator, massage cream, mask, moisturiser. On here, you've got the headband, spatulas, mask brush. Your bowl with water. You will need to update your water. I've used boiling water from the kettle because by the time I'm ready, it'll have slightly cooled down. You can put a couple of drops of lavender in the water as well so that when you're removing things, you can smell the lavender and it just gives that extra something. Now, I use mittens which are the mitts you can you can get maybe you've not got those in your kits you can get them from the GMX or from the wholesalers or online but you can use spatial sponges now if you are going to use these you will have to put them in the washing machine the good thing I like about these is you can put them on a boil wash so it's really good for health and safety and cleanliness you've got tissues and you've got cotton wool and I'm using dry cotton wool you can use wet cotton wool but it will slightly dilute the toner so out in industry we tend to use the dry cotton wool for the, to keep the quality of the products every time you use a bowl line it with a tissue to keep your bowl nice and clean and safe underneath we've got the um, rubbish bowl and that's lined with a tissue and that's where we're going to place the, the rubbish in the salon you would have a bin with a lid on and a pedal so that you can press it and put it in and it must have the lid on it to keep it health and safety now what we've done with the trolley is we've sterilized it first of all or sanitized it with um, with an anti-back wash or with surgical spirit and then i've lined it with the bed roll with the tissue paper so that's your trolley your bed you've got on your bed a large towel first of all you've got your toweling sheet that you've got and make sure you can still lift your bed up and down with the toweling sheet on your large towel now we have got these beautiful bath sheets now if you've got one that's not a bath sheet you'll have to put a small at the bottom and the top and then a small towel at the top bed roll Sometimes if we're running out of bedroll, we will split the bedroll and you're literally just going to split it in half. But for the purpose of the video, I'm going to use it fully like you would in a salon. But to save costs, we would be able to split the bedroll. And then I've put two pieces, two squares on the top so that when I finish exfoliating, I can take that away and remove any of the excess exfoliation. I've got a basket. For the client's clothes a towel folded up at the bottom and i'm going to ask the client to place a towel over herself or himself before he gets on the bed and you will need two chairs for the skin analysis because what we're going to do is when we do a full skin analysis we question so it's the verbal we look so we've got the visual. So I will have the magnifying lamp on the wall ready. If it's not on the wall, you need to pop it in the hole in the trolley. So you must have a mag lamp. So you're going to question first, visually look, and you're going to touch the skin. So that's the manual. So it's three steps to a skin analysis. You've got the talk, the look, and the touch. So you need to make sure you've got that organised as well. Don't stand up above your client when they're sitting down. That can be quite threatening. And when we look at your customer service module, we'll be able to look at that and you'll be able to understand more why. So try and sit on the same side as your client and on the same level as your client. So it's as non-threatening and as comfortable as possible. When you're asking someone questions about themselves, it can be quite awkward. So we want them immediately to feel comfortable. In the, in the beauty industry, you would have a private beauty room obviously we're in a training school so what we would do when the client comes in is pull the curtains to the end and sit down and let them to you talk then you pull the curtains back so your assessor can see you if your assessor can't see what you're doing how can she know whether you've passed or referred so it's really important that we create this image for when they walk in but once they're on the bed we pull the curtains back okay so that's your setup what you're then going to do is greet your client ask them to undress place the clothes in the basket and the basket under the bed 
There is facial gowns or a large towel that they can wrap around themselves and then ask them to place the towel over themselves and then you'll come in. While that's happening, while they're undressing and putting the towel around and doing everything, you can close the curtains at that time. So step one, set up. Step two, bring your client in and greet them, go through the verbal consultation. Step three is to get your client, close the curtains and get your client onto the bed. Step Next step, open the curtains and ask your client then more questions about her skin and we'll have a look and we'll start the facial. This, oh, do you want to take your earrings in that form? Yeah, yeah, of course. Now, I'll come to this side. Okay. okay. So, the client now has got on the bed. Jill's modelling for us, so you'll all recognise Jill when she's running around the salon assessing you. What we've done is we've placed, asked her to place a towel over herself. So when I've come into the room, she's got a towel on her. And then, Put the pillow underneath. I've put them um, because sometimes the pillowcases are a little bit. You just need to always use a towel so there's no cross infection at all. You're not using the same pillow touching the skin or anything because you've got a towel that will go straight into the wash. She's covered with the blanket to keep her really snug. Now, placing the pillow underneath the knees will take the pressure off the back. So if some people lie down, they'll be really uncomfortable, they'll start getting backache. So it's always really comfortable to put a pillow underneath. In the salon, I have an electric heated blanket underneath. So the client's actually got the heated blanket as well. Some people use quilts rather than blankets. So you have to look at your particular salon to find what's the best comfortable thing for you. Some clients, if they're menopausal, won't want a blanket. So it's really about learning your client and understanding what your client wants. Make sure it all looks neat and tidy. So when the clients come in, they all see everything's beautiful. Now, what we've done at the top is I've used a towel. You place it over one shoulder diagonally and then you bring it over that way that way you can keep the decollete warm while you're doing the face but when you're finished or when you finish that you can just unwrap the shoulders for the massage it's really important because this is going to be cleaned every time that this is what touches your client's skin you don't want a blanket touching your client's skin that's just to keep her warm now at the top, we're going to use a headband. Now I like to do a scalp massage while the mask's on. You can, if your client doesn't want a hair massaging through, you can use um, hand cream and massage the hands. But it is nice to do a scalp massage or a hand, depending on what your client prefers. If you're going to massage through the hair, your client's going to have oil through and she's going to have it going out and it's going to be a mess. But some clients don't like the hair being a mess. So it's really important if with that person you'd use a towel as well as a headband and keep the hair absolutely covered. Now I'm just going to use a headband today. So I'm just going to lift Jill's head, place it down. And when you use the headband, make sure you've got all the hair enclosed. Now when I do the massage, I do actually massage the ears. The ears can be part of a reflexology zone, but I'm just going to cover the ears until I get to the massage so that we don't do any of the hair at all. So there shouldn't be any hair sticking out because some clients will go mad if you mess the hair. Then what I'm going to do is to preserve your headband, I'm going to place a tissue in the headband. It, I don't like it if you see loads of grubby headbands, you know, it's all about image. And if everything's looking grubby, your client's not going to see you as a perfectionist. And when you deal with any beauty treatment, you must always be seen as a perfectionist, very professional. I'm going to ask Jill to come nearer to me so that I can I can reach I need to feel fully comfortable and be able to if I'm leaning forward I'm putting a strain on my back so I've got to be able to my hands naturally sit here that's my true range of movement 
So it's really important that Jill is to where my hands are. So if you want to move up for me a bit more, Jill. That's great. You and your therapist and your client have to be comfortable before you start the treatment. Now, some people would like to stand up while doing a treatment. Some people sit down when doing the treatment. But your posture must be correct at all times. So if you're standing, you have your feet slightly apart at shoulder level and your back and shoulder back. And as I said, you range there. You shouldn't be leaning forward or leaning back or bending over. And that's why it's important to wear flat shoes so you're not pushing yourself out of your true range of movement. Or, if you're using a chair, your ankles, your knees and your hips all need to be at right angles and your back needs to be steady. You can get specialised chairs if you have any issues, so do speak to your assessors about that if you have any postural problems already. So I like to sit down when I do a facial. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to release the bed. Obviously, always warn your client first what you're going to do. I'm going to release the bed just so that it's flat. So I'm just going to let that go, Jill. Okay. I'm going to take a seat. Now, obviously this is a video, so we need the lighting and we need the quiet. But in the salon situation, you would make sure that your music is on, relaxing music, your lighting is dimmed, because you do have a mag lamp which will provide you with light for when you're doing your skin analysis. Obviously here in a college we won't use candles, but you can use aromatherapy burners, diffusers. I like to use a lot of lavender when I do the facials because by relaxing the spirit, the skin looks relaxed. So those are all things you can add to, to make the correct environment.